this conference will now be recorded. Friends, I am uh, observing from last uh, 10 to 12 days that uh, e-meetings are now becoming very popular amongst all the professionals as well as non-professionals because of the introduction of this social distancing. Normally in social distancing, one should be away from each other, but this e era, now that has completed the whole scenario, has changed the whole scenario. Though this concept was there from last so many years, but most of us were not using uh, for that, but with the introduction or say advent of this uh, coronavirus, now we are almost everyone is accustomed to this kind of uh, e-meetings. And this social distancing has been removed to a certain great extent. From last so many days, so many meetings are there, four to five, at least four to five meeting, meetings, I can uh, see that in the all WhatsApp group that we have conducted this seminars or webinars. And at night, all family members are either playing games uh, or doing the chit chat. So now this becomes a very familiar concept of e-meeting. And I must congratulate uh, our uh, 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 management of the uh, our study circle that they have in a very tight time introduced this concept. And in a very last four to five days, they have uh, and, uh, conducted, so this is the fourth seminar, if I am not mistaken. Right, uh, uh, Charvi? This is the fourth or fifth seminar, e-seminar, which they yeah. have conducted. Ajit? Yes, fifth seminar. This, this is sixth seminar. Okay, I am standing to correct Fifth seminar. Okay, okay. So, congratulations to both of you for uh, organizing this kind of uh, seminars and updating the members and at the same time occupying every one of us. Thank you, sir. Friends, on the today's topic of recent amendment under GST, everyone must be observing with the event of uh, GST law that whenever any amendment comes, it comes uh, in a bunches, right? Any point of time, eight to ten amendments come. After amendment, they will come out with some clarification that yes, this is what we have to read the clarification. This is what we are intending to uh, see in the notification. And therefore, it looks like a mini finance act every time. So whenever anyone say PSV wanted to have the seminar or recent amendment, the question comes how to keep or to keep the boundaries. What should be covered in that uh, uh, topic? So in the today's uh, recent amendment, I have uh, chosen to take the relief measures which has been introduced by the government on the because of this COVID-19 and uh, because, uh, lockdown condition and certain other notifications and circulars which has been issued in the month of April 2020. Many of my friends were asking that, uh, please tell me which book you are referring for this uh, amendments in the GST because so many notification terms, how to keep a track of that. So they are asking me that which book should be referred. I said, it's very difficult to give you an uh, idea that which book is better because nowadays uh, notifications and circulars are coming like uh, every two months or three months something new comes up and then in such a situation it would be very difficult for the compiler of book also how to keep, uh, keep a track of it at present if you will see the book size of the gst it is too bulky so therefore the best way is to have the e compilation ready available with you in your laptop or mobile uh, app is there which is freely downloadable and you can view it even without internet also that is the best way now you can uh, use it now coming to the today's session, as I have told you that my session is divided into two parts, relief measures and the other amendment. So now let's go to the first of all, relief measures under the GST due to the COVID-2019. As we are observing from last 20 days, and the first lockout is for 21 days, now we are on the 20th day, and uh, probably now all the state government as well as the center has decided that we will now extend the period of blocking of that of blocking off of the period to 30th april because of the spreading of the virus is too much and therefore there is a total lockdown and therefore businessmen cannot do the business and therefore they cannot comply with the law also and therefore some relaxation measures has been pronounced uh, uh, in the by the government now let's see how it has it is done 
Friends, you must be aware that whenever any law has to be changed, it has to be done by the assent, has to be given by both the house and then only the it becomes an act. But if something has to be changed in the law, then first of all, it has to come out by way of an ordinance. And therefore, many of you must have observed that taxation and other laws, relaxation of certain provisions, ordinance 2020 has come into the law on 31st March 2020, whereby certain relaxation has been given under various laws like direct tax, that is income tax act, indirect tax, that is customs act, GST law and the uh, other, uh, other other laws in which certain relaxation measures has been provided. My job is today restricted to only the GST law. The president has, uh, has pronounced this uh, taxation, uh, this uh, ordinance 2020 at uh, 11 o'clock in the midnight and they have issued the ordinance. So that uh, the, all the effect can be given on, from the first day of April 2020 itself. Now, what kind of ordinance it was? So they have said that under the GST law, they have acquired the power by inserting section 168A into the CSC GST law, wherein it has been uh, power has been taken to extend the time limit which has been specified in or prescribed or notified under this act in respect of the in which any action has to be taken on which is not completed or not complied with due to the force of measure. Now, this concept of force measure would be very important. So, what do you mean by force measure? They have defined in the, in the explanation what do you mean by force measure. And it has been said that it has been defined as a case of war, epidemic, flood, drought, fire, cyclone, earthquake, or any other calamity caused by nature, nature or otherwise affecting the implementation of any provision of this act. That means because of the, uh, any calamity caused by nature or Otherwise, this force measure would be applied and any incompletion of any of the actions which was to be taken, then that section 168 has taken a power that they can extend the time limit or provide the relaxation in the time limit. Now, the next question which will come up is that uh, whether this ordinance which has come, whether this becomes really an act, and therefore, I, we have to go to the Indian Constitution, which says that whenever any ordinance has to be passed, it has to be passed within six weeks by both the houses. That means by Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha has to pass this ordinance and becomes an act. And then and then only these provisions will, the whatever is provided in the act will come into existence. Therefore, technically speaking, Section 168A will come into the power only when it has been sanctioned by both the act. Of course, it will be uh, uh, sanctioned from the retrospective date that is from 1st of April 2020. So without going into the much of the technicality, what will happen? Let's go ahead. Now, let's go ahead. So, what this uh, uh, on the basis of the power required under 168A, the central government since come out with a notification. Now, what this notification says that if there is any time limit for any completion or compliance of any action by any authority body or by any person which has been specified or prescribed or notified in the act which has to be uh, complied within the two days, that is from the 28th March 2020 to 29th June 2020, then what will happen that date that would be extended to 30th June 2020. That means say for example, if any notice has to be issued by the department between this period 20th March to 29th June 2020, because it otherwise becomes a time bar. Then in such a situation, the date has been extended till 30th June 2020. So, and this is from the department perspective, that means if any completion of any proceeding or passing of any order or for issuance of any notice, intimation, notification, then the date would be extended till 30th June 2020. Now, what would be the, pro uh, uh, pro pro from the perspective of the taxpayers, that if the taxpayer has to file any appeal or reply to the notice or a show post notice or an application or furnishing of any report, document or return, then between these two dates, whose due date falls on 20th March 2020 and 229th June 2020, then the date is automatically extended to 30th June 2020. So from taxpayers' perspective, this date is uh, notified on this date and this has been notified by way of a 
notification on 35-2020. Further, it says, however, this extension of time limit, that means 30th June, is not applicable in respect of the certain situation. Let's see what are those situations. Number first, if there is any compliance from the perspective of time and value of supply. Now, you know that uh, there has to be a time limit for issuance of invoice. When the issue, uh, invoice has to be issued, it says within 30 days from the date of provision of service and in respect of supply of goods, it has to be on or at the time of the supply or, or, or the, of, the, of the goods. So that time limit will not change. Then value of supply. If I have to do the valuation as per section 15, then that is also have no time delivery, so that will not be applicable. Then composition scheme lapses once the turnover exceeds the time limit specified. You know that in a if a taxpayer wanted to go for a composition scheme of 50 lakhs or whatever it may be, then their turnover limit has to be up to 50 lakhs or 1 crore rupees. If it exceeds on some particular date, then from that date onwards, he is out of composition in the, is in the normal scheme. So now they are saying there is no change in that. It would be from that date onwards and not 30th June. Procedure for registration. The procedure has been prescribed under section 25 and uh, 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 rules thereof that has also no relevance. Registration of procedure for casual taxable person and non-taxable person, issuance of tax invoice, furnishing of details of outward supply, that means GSTR1, also that means there is no extension of the date. Hmm? Late, uh, levy of late fees, interest on delayed payment of tax, power to arrest, liability of a partner of a firm to pay tax, Penalty in respect of certain offenses. If you go to section 122, they have given a whole list of 10 to 12 items wherein uh, some penalty uh, 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 circumstances and the amount has been quantified. Detention, seizure, and release of goods and conveyances in transit, that is section 129. Then furnishing of return, that is GSTR 3 under section 39. However, the time limit will be applicable in respect of a taxable person who is required to file return under TDS, tax deduction at source 51, 52 and uh, section 39 for a non-resident purpose. This I will come in, uh, at a just within a couple of minutes so that you will have an idea that how the time limit has been extended. And inspection of goods in a moment so far as the e-way bill is concerned. That means if the e-way bill is uh, uh, issued, then and the officer has all the power to inspect the goods in the moment within that period and then the time limit is not extended. However, one important thing is in respect of a movement of a goods during this period. Now, so section 138J, which is in respect of the EVA bill. It says that the, whenever the goods has taken the movement of goods from one place to another, they have fixed the time limit. Within this much time limit, that has to be completed and they have given a table which says that when you, uh, if the, uh, and that is based on the distance. That means if the distance is up to 100 kilometers, the movement has to be completed within one day. If the distance is between 100 kilometers to 300 kilometers, the movement of the goods should be completed within three days and so on. And if it is up to 1000 kilometers or more, then 15 days uh, valid time period has been given. Now, for example, the moment when the lockdown has been announced on 28th March 2020 and at that point of time, the goods has started taking the moment of the goods and because of that, if the goods has not been reached within this specified period of time, then what will happen? So that's why they have come out with a relaxation as says that if any time period of the validity expires, during the period 20th March 2020 to 15th April 2020, then the valid period, validity period of such eBay will would be deemed to have been extended till 30th April. That means this April that would be the last date. That means by 30th April it should reach. So if look, we are looking to the present situation, now uh, on the day this notification has came. They are very, on 20th March 2020, they have very much understood that yes, the first lockdown period would be till 14th April. So they have said that whatever time period till 15th April, the due date would be the 30th April and now they are extending it till 30th April. So that means we are presuming that by 30th April, the whole lockdown will go away provided the <clears throat> 
spreading of the uh, virus is not uh, within the controllable limit. So let's hope for the best. So, so as far as the event is concerned, by 30th, if any goods has been uh, take, uh, transfer of, uh, transported between this 20th March to 15th April 2020, then the time limit has been extended till 30th April and no uh, adverse steps would be taken upon those persons. Now let us see the various compliances which is required to be uh, completed within this period of time. That is from 20th March 2020 to 30th June 2020. Now, during this compliance, various due dates are there as far as the return filing is concerned. So, the due date of filing of return of GSTR 3B and 1 is concerned is very important from all of us. Now, fortunately, they have or unfortunately, the due date for filing of return of 3B and 1 has not been extended. They have near for, for the month of February 20, March 20 and April 20. The lockdown has been started on 20th March 2020 onwards and the last date for filing the 3B for the month of February 20 was of uh, 20th March 2020 and therefore it has been taken that for the month of Feb, March and April the due date is not extended but only the time uh, limit for calculating the interest and late filing has been interest that we will come to know uh, in a couple of minutes afterwards. Now, when the press release has come, now see the funniest part. When the press release has come, at that point of time, it has paid that way any return has been filed in the month of March 20. That means a problem was, uh, everyone was discussing whether February has been extended or not. And a lot of debate was going on that it is applicable only for the period of month March 20 or February 20 also. But when the notification has come, it has been very much clarified that yes, the date or uh, uh, that date has been for the February, March and April 2020. So one thing is for sure that for March 20, uh, February 20, if due to any reason you cannot file the return, upload the return, then at least interest and uh, the late filing fees would not be applicable if you have been able to file by 30 uh, by the respective due date, which we will uh, uh, come to know in a couple of minutes uh, uh, later. However, this due date is extended only from the perspective of calculation of interest and levy of late filing fees. As I have told you, the deal date has not been extended. Further, this relaxation in interest and late filing fees is applicable only if due date, if due tax is paid up by filing of the return in 3D by the date as specified in the notification issued by the board. So you have to comply within that due date then and then only the benefit of relaxation of interest and late filing fees would be available. Now let's see what are those fees. Now first GST 3B. Now you know that uh, the tax tiers are divided into two parts. Whose turnover is more than 5 crore and turnover less than 5 crore. For turnover more than 5 crore they have to file a monthly return. Right. Now let's see. So first of all, let's see the taxpayers having an aggregate turnover of rupees five crore and above in the preceding financial year. Now preceding financial year, year it would be 1920 because February 2020's return was due on 20th March 2020. Its relevant date for filing of the return was 20th due date was 20th March. So it falls within that. Uh, due date of 28th March to 29th June and therefore the interest, so relaxation in interest and late filing fees would be available. So in this table I have said month or uh, period for which return is to be filed, due date of filing of return and the extended date. Now the notification says that you have to file your return before 24th June 2020 of the month of February 20. Then if you are able to file by 24th June 2020, then you would be able to eligible for the uh, benefit of the interest as well as late filing fees. What is the benefit? It says that the concessional interest would be chargeable at the rate of 9% from the due date of payment. That means till 20 uh, and further interest will be counted from the 16th day onwards. That is interest will not be charged for the first 15 days. So two kinds of relaxation has been provided that if you file the interest by 20, uh, uh, 24th June 2020, then what will happen? The no interest for the first 15 days, then the interest if you have filed late, then interest would be counted from the uh, 
next 16 days and it would be charged at the rate of 9%. Suppose if you have, and what would be the late filing fees? It says amount of late filing fees would be waived. There would not be any late filing of fees. But ah, then the second situation. In the month of March 2020, the due date is 20th April 2020. Again, you cannot file the return because of the lockdown. So they have said that if you file by 24th June 2020, then again concessional rate of interest would be there. 9% and interest would be counted from the 16 day onwards. Similarly for the month of April also. In the month of May 2020, now here the day due date is falls on 20th June 2020. Now what the they have made? Here they are saying that my due date of return filing is 20th June. Here they have extended the due date by on and the due date is extended is 27th June 2020. Now let us examine go to 168A again. What is tries to say that if any compliance which is to be made between the period 20th June to 29th June, the due date is extended till 30th June, correct? Now my due date is 30th June, but here they are giving the relaxation up to what date? Only till 24th. They are saying you have to file the return, all the return for the month of February, March, April by 24th June. For the month of May, it is 27th June. So you can very well file till 30th June, but they say no, for the purpose of calculation, we will give only relief on to only this much date. Now I don't understand why such kind of thing. When on the main act they are saying that it is all extended up to 30th June, then why for one week they are saying that no, it would be only to till 24th June or 27th June. So just imagine how much calculation one person has to make, how the software will run because of all this due date. Now what will happen? It says if you do it this in this manner till 24th June, 9% interest would be available. If you file afterwards, then another rate would be uh, applicable. For the month of now, suppose in the month of May, what it happens is that if you don't file the return by 27 June, then no relaxation is there. Then normal rate of interest is leviable and normal late post would be leviable. What is the normal rate of interest? It says 18% interest. And what is the late filing fees? It says if your return is nil, then 20 rupees per day, or in respect of if it is other than nil return, then 50 rupees per day and maximum per late filing fees is 10,000 rupees. This was by way of a notification number 64 of 2017. So this much late filing fees to be, uh, was to be payable. Now let's try to find it out and this was by way of a notification number 31 of 2020. You can refer to this notification. Now very important thing, how will determine the calculate the interest? That is very important thing in this whole concept and how we keep a track. So I have tried to compile the information how you will file your, uh, calculate your interest. Now I have considered that your the return is due for the month of March 20, whose due date is appears to be 20th April 2020. Now, the, now I have filed my return on 2nd May 2020. So there is a delay of 11 days. Now in this situation, first of all, we have to determine is there any, I, my condition for concessional rate of interest update is eligible? Yes, I am eligible because return is filed before 24th June 2020, which is the last date for calculating the interest. Then what would be the interest? It says nil. For first 15 days, we will not charge you and late filing is waived. Then next, suppose if I file on 20th May 2020. So there is a total delay of 30 days. So now I have to check whether there is a uh, condition for concessional rate of interest is complex. Yes, I have complex because what is my uh, last date for calculating the interest is 24th June instead of 18%, 9%. So it says for first 15 days, nil rate of interest. After that, 9% interest. Now total 30 days. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Hello. I think someone. Hello. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. So here, my delay uh, days are 30 days. Now we know that for the first 15 days, no interest would be charged. For the balance 15 days, my interest would be charged at the rate of 9%. From in this our situation, 6th May 2020 to 28th May 2020. Then as regards late filing fees, there is no late filing fees because I have complied. 
the due, uh, date of 24th June 2020. Then third situation. Third situation, I have filed on 20th June 2020. That means there is a delay of 61 days. Again, we have to see whether I have complied with the interest uh, uh, rate, uh, concessional rate. Yes, I have complied because my last date is 24th. Before four days, I have filed my uh, uh, return. So I am eligible for the uh, concessional rate of interest. So again, how you will calculate? Mean for the first 15 days. 9% interest for the 46 days from 6th May 20 to 28th June 20. And my late filing fees totally waived because I have submitted my return before 24th June. Third situation, 24th June on the last date I have filed. Hmm? So 65 days delay, so I have to file my interest. Huh? The interest has concessional rate is only till <clears throat> 24th June 20. So I have complied with uh, my concessional rate ka condition. So again, how we will calculate? Nil rate for first 15 days, 9% interest for first uh, 15 days, and then uh, no, normal rate of interest 60, uh, from 6 5 to 24th June 2020. And my late filing fees would be waived. Now see the situation. Suppose I have not filed my return till 24th June 2020. That means conditional uh, con condition for concessional rate of interest I have violated. Once I have violated this condition, that means I would not be eligible to take the benefit of concessional rate. So, I have 9% nahi lagega, 18% interest rate lagega from, uh, for the 71 days. So, it would be from 21st April 2020 to 24th June 2020. Late fees, kya hoga? yes, I have to pay the late fees. I don't have the option. So now if we see the whole thing, yes, I have to find my uh, uh, three weeks. Otherwise, I have to pay the interest at the top of, of, the, of the concessional rate at 9%. Ah, they have given a concession for first 15 days. But then the rate of interest, 9% uh, concessional interest has to be applied. So yes, free may nahi hai. Basically, if you ask me because of all this situation, they should have to waive the interest because of this condition, because there is no fault. But here the government is not interested. He says that what come may what you have to comply with the uh, law and pay the tax because, of, because they have to also spend the money. So basically the thing which is there in the mind that the due date of filing of return has been extended. That is not the correct thing. Only the concessional rate of interest would be applicable for the filing of return. So all of you are requested to please take note of the same letter and uh, ask the uh, client to file the return at the earliest so that even they can <coughs> save the interest. Now, technically what will happen? For the return for the month of February 2020, which was to be filed in the month of March 20, hmm? 20th March, you can very well file it because uh, the data is very much available. Uh, only the problem is as regards the finance, which is very much important nowadays, but ultimately either you pay it to the bank or to the government, it's all one and the same thing. So why to pay it to the government or someone? It is better if you comply the law and pay the uh, taxes at the earliest. Otherwise, interest provisions uh, uh, would be applicable to you. Only though they have given the benefit is the concessional rate. So for the February, I'm sure you may be able to file it for the month of March 2020, in the month of March uh, 2020, also 20 days was the working period. So I'm sure that uh, all the taxpayers can very well file the, uh, uh, they have the data with them basically. Yes, of course, I can understand as regards the money is concerned, but otherwise data would be there. For the month of April 2020, yes, the whole month will go in the lockdown period. So really there won't be any supply. So there are question of payment of tax would not arise in most of the cases. Of course, hiring few those who are into uh, grocery business or a fast moving consumer items, they are, they, their business is going on, but otherwise everything is on a stainless uh, condition. So this is all about the filing of return for the month of February 20, March 20, April 20 and May 20 uh, return. Now let's go to the other kind of taxpayer. Now who is the other kind of taxpayers whose turnover is from 1.5 crore to 5 crore tur tur turnover? Hmm? Now this has been, now why this turnover limit? 
Now you know that uh, on uh, GST three B normal uh, due date was the twenty eighth of the next month. So February twenty, the due date was twenty eighth April two thousand twenty eighth March two thousand and twenty. However, at that point of time, there was a lot of rush in the portal GST portal, and due to that, on the last dates, many of you have experienced. That they could not able to file the return and the message done that you are on the queue. So 1.5 lakhs uh, taxpayers have already logged in and therefore you are in the queue and return cannot be filed. And accordingly, everyone has to stay in the office or they have to file the returns by going to their home and file the return at the midnight by 12 o'clock. So in order to avoid that, they have said, okay, okay now we they have introduced the concept of. Uh, <clears throat> Staggering of the filing of the return. So they have divided the taxpayers. How, how they have divided the taxpayers between one in 1.5 crore up to 5 crore. 1 point the turnover between 1.5 uh, uh, for the turnover of less than 5 crore they have divided into two categories. Number one, for certain kinds of state they have said that the due date would be 22nd of the next month. And in respect of other other uh, states, if the date your due date would be 24. So now three dates are there for filing of the three B return. One is the 20th of the next month. That is in respect of the taxpayers whose turnover is more than two crore uh, five crore rupees. Taxpayers whose turnover is less than five crore. That has been divided into two parts based on the states in which you are located. It was 22nd day and in respect of other state is the 24th day that has been given in the notification number 7 oblique 2020 that has been in the filing of return in a staggered manner. Now let's see what are the due dates. So now this is in respect of taxpayers whose turnover is between 1.5 crore to 5 crore rupees. Okay, the, uh, for the month of February 2020, the due date of return is 22 or 24th of the uh, March 2020 based on their uh, uh, based on the their uh, registration in the states in which they are from uh, carrying on the business. Now the first February uh, uh, return the due date has been extended for the concessional rate of interest is 29th June 2020. What will happen to the interest? Let's see. It says interest would not be charged if the returns are filed within the respective due date. That means there is a saving rate. What is the saving rate? It says now we will not charge you interest for the turnover between of less than 5 crore rupees. No interest would be charged if you file your return by 29th June 2020. What about the late filing fees? It says amount of late filing fees would be waived. Notification number 32 oblique 2020. So it will. For the uh, taxpayers whose turnover is less than 5 crore rupees, if you file your GST 3D till 29 June 2020, no interest would be charged and no late fees would be charged. Similarly, for the month of March 20, my due date is 22nd or 24th April. The due date was 29 June. And it, uh, again, if you file it within that date, then again there is no interest would be charged and late fees would also be waived. For the month of April 2020, the due date is 22nd or 24th May 2020 and the due date is 30th June 2020. Again, the benefit is of interest is uh, eligible, no interest and in a total amount of, uh, of late filing fees would be waived. But what about for the month of May 20? May 20, they have extended the due date, the date uh, 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 and it says that my due date would be 12th or 14th of July 2020. If you file it within due date, due date, then no interest or late fees would be uh, provided. But otherwise, your normal rate of interest and late fees would be provided. What is the uh, notification? This is a notification number 31 of 2020. And normal late filing fees, same. If it is a nil return, 20 rupees per day, or in respect of other. Uh, tax per taxable per person it is 50 rupees per day however maximum interest is restricted to 10,000 rupees this is by way of a notification number 64 of the 2017 friends you will see that uh, this much information you should have it 
otherwise it would be very difficult if you go to section 67 it says 100 rupees per day now if you are not aware about this notification of the relaxation in the late filing fees then your calculation would be wrong so therefore this gst law is totally based on the notification and circular you should have updated information about the same otherwise it would be too difficult now i am wondering how this will all taken care of all by the software suppose if you are uh, filing the return by using the, the government portal where you will key in the information uh, however how you will keep a track of this calculation of interest and late filing fees it would be too difficult another thing suppose if you are uh, uh, opting to use any software gst software so many softwares are now available in the market now the thing is how much change they have to make it in that software regarding this calculation of interest and late filing fees too much uh, work is now for from there and too much business is also there and learn and last and important thing how the infosys the our gst portal which is the another law i always used to say that there in uh, india we have two kinds of uh, gst law one gst law which has been given the assent by the president and becomes an act gst act and other law is the our gst portal both of it works in its own way we don't know so if you wanted to file your return one should not see the gst act otherwise you cannot able to file your return and if you want to uh, wanted to file uh, fight on the uh, facts then you don't see the gst portal but then you only see the gst then only it would be possible for you to comply the law or to uh, fight the law otherwise it's not possible so now we have to see how this uh, infosys would be in a position to change all this and keep it otherwise one should be ready with lot many notices which will come to all of us and there would be a lot of business and opportunity for us right now you must have observed during all this that that many people like almost all of us have received the notices in respect of the interest gross tax like gross interest or net interest because the government has not changed it and again this thing is going on they in by the gst council has said that yes the interest has to be in the 34th council meeting they have announced that the interest should be on the net basis but they have not amended the act ha huh, rather than off let they have amended the act but they have not uh, notified that notify uh, that uh, this would be applicable from this date and therefore it was that uh, proviso becomes redundant as of now also this is how our uh, government works and therefore the department has started issuing notice that interest has to be levyable on gross basis and not net basis again the government has to come out with a uh, press release that no no interest has to be again on the net basis and that's why now the <clears throat> board has uh, not taken any uh, uh coercive action against those people otherwise they will again start recovering of the interest on the basis of gross basis let's see now what will happen now coming to the third category tax payers having the interest up to 1.5 crore now this is again a one more category they have uh, come up if you see the original notification notification of 7 it only talks about the turnover below uh, more than 5 5 crore or less than 5 crore and the staggered manner now this one more category has been added in this notification number 31 by oblique 2020 which says if the tax payers having an aggregate turnover of two inr 1.5 crore in the preceding financial year then they have announced the date now i was i was failed to understand why this third category it has been observed that in our country people are believing in divide and rule very honest that's why so many condition for composition tax payer 1 crore 50 lakhs right then turnover of 1 point more than 1.5 crore rupees less than 1.5 crore rupees for gstr 1 for gstr 3b 5 crore less than 5 crore then less than 5 crore again there are now three categories for uh, states below 5 uh, uh, for states uh, uh for between 1.5 crore to 5 crore it is again divided into two kinds of state then third category less than 1.5 crore crore and all the states now how to remember all this thing it becomes too difficult but we have to comply with the law hame to isme rehna hai yahi hamara bread butter hai aur isme se hi hame jeena hai right now let's see isme kya bata raha hai now it says that uh, Your tax payer having a turnover up to one, up to 1.5 crore rupees, 
then for the month of February and March, the original due date, which was there pronounced, uh, would be applicable, that is 22nd and 24th March. Now, their date will be different. For the month of February, they said 38th June. Now, between 1.5 crore and 5 crore C, the date is what? Let's see, it's 29th June. And here they are saying 38th June. Eight din jada de diya, up to 1.5 crore. Huh? What uh, difference it makes? Let's see another for the month of March. It says my last due date is 29 June, but in respect of up to 5 crore, it is 3rd July again, two three days. What difference it makes? Do you think that there are so many players and that it would be contained in the staggered manner? I don't think so, but yes, we have to do it go in that manner. So, a 1.5 up to 1.5 crore that means bohot chote army ke liye unhone kya bataya. अगर आपको February 20 का return करना है, आपको हम 38 June देते हैं, right? क्या आपको benefit मिलेगा interest में? No interest would be charged if you are filed your return by 38 June. What late fees? No late fees would be levied for for the month of February. You have to file by 38 June. For the month of March 20, you have to file by 3rd July. And if you file it by 3rd July. No interest and no late fees. For the month of April, you have to file by 6th of July. No interest, no uh, uh, and waiver of late fees. Then come to May 20. Now says May 20, your original due date was 22nd or 24th June 20, which has been extended to 12th or 14th to 14th June 2020. Now here they have given two dates. So now again a question comes that yes, they have extended that year 1.5 crore me again. No state ho jayega. Otherwise, there was no reason to give two dates over here. So this is another thing. So we have to wait for one more notification to come and wait. The Ponce state ko one uh, up to 1.5 crores mein hai. This ki 12th rahegi or 14th rahegi. We have to wait for that. Now, what is the interest rate that says yes? Yahan concessional rate of interest nahi dehenge. If you fail to file your return beyond 12th or 14th of July. So, normal rate of interest and normal late filing fees would be applicable to you. This is again provided in notification number 31 of late 2020 and the normal late, late filing fees would be applicable. So now, having said understand this GSTR 3D, now let's move on to the another return. Another return is GSTR 1. Now, everyone knows that in this GSTR 1, one need not have to pay the tax. We have to just file the submission of the information. This is not the return, but this is a because if you go to section 37, it only says it is a detail of outward supply. But we treat this as a return. Right? Let's not go into that argument whether this is a return or not. So, GSTR 1, so as I told you here also, the taxpayers are divided more than 1.5 crore, less than 1.5 crore. So, first lot of C, the Pile Party look for the turnover about 1.5 crore. Turnover about the sorry, Pile Chote, turnover up to 5 crores. Turnover up to 5 crores, you know that turnover up to 5 crores, they have to file their returns on a quarterly basis. So, for the month of, for the quarter ended March 20, the due date was the 30th April. They said, yes, this 30th April due date is there. We are not extending. But, concessional rate of interest would be provided if you file it by 30th June 2020 by notification number 35 oblique 2020. Now, here, for filing of GSTR1, you, you need not have to pay the interest because you have payment pay nine, so there is no question of any interest is there. But here this 30th June is only in respect of late filing fees. So if you file it uh, by 30th June 2020, there won't be any late filing fees. So you need not have to worry. Then let's come to the quarter ended June 20. Quarter ended June 20, they have said that you have to file your return by 31st July 2020. This has been notified in notification number 27 of 2020. Since this due date falls in 31st July 2020, that means beyond 38th June 2020, so government is under an impression that yes, everything would be settled by this due date, so there is no need for edit any date to be given or no concession has to be given. So the normal late filing fees would be applicable uh, to them if they file the return beyond 31st July 2020. 20 and normal late filing fees is the 20 rupees per day uh, in respect of nil return and 50 rupees. 
for the quarter ended September 2020. The last uh, due date is 31st October 2020. Here also there is no extension and normal uh, late filing fees would be applicable as of today. We don't know, but this is what the position is of today. Then let's go to the more than 1.5 crore. This is another category. Now here 1.5 crore, more than 1.5 crore, every taxpayer has to file it on a monthly basis. So uh, February 2020, that return is already filed by 10th of March 2020. So that uh, interest uh, late filing this question doesn't arise. If they have filed late beyond 10th March 2020, they have to pay the normal late filing fees. But for the month of March 20, the due date falls on 11th April 2020. So anything between 21st March, 20th March 2020 and 29th June, the due date is 30th June. So here they 30th June provide which is as per section 168A and here this says by notification 35 also said yes this would be 30th June 2015 again since this is only a so, uh, details of outward supply no tax has to be payable along with it so there is no question of interest so one to interest nahi lagega. but yes late filing fees if they file <coughs> There's uh, details of outward supply by 30th June 2020, date fees would be waived. April 20, the due date was 11th May 2020, which is extended till 30th June, May 20, 11th June, usko bhi unhona 30th June per day. June 20 falls on in July, so now here there is no need for exten uh, extension of the time limit, so they have not uh, said anything about uh, it. Non normal late filing filtering fees would be applicable in case of a delay from the state. So this is all as regards GSTB 3, uh, 3B and 1. Now do you think that any other compliance needs to be made? Yes, there are so many other returns also, not only 1 and 3B. Yes. Now let's see what are the other compliance which needs to be complied with. Now let's see those composition uh, scheme person. Now you know that uh, whenever a person is under composition scheme, every year they before the beginning of the uh, new financial year, they have to often uh, mention that whether he is continuing their uh, composition scheme or not. And for that matter, they have to file one intimation which is known as a CMP 02. This option for the financial year 2021, because in the April 20, has to be opted before 31st March 2020. Now, since this due date falls under that special scheme 20th March to 29 June, therefore, naturally, that is also to be extended. And therefore, they said, yes, this scheme, this date, because you cannot file it, this scheme uh, that has been extended to 30th June 2020. So I was wondering, this is a good thing which they have done, right? Now they can very well take a situation that internet is chalu hai, you have to just implement it. So what is harm in that? But friends, for that purpose, you should have the data available with you. If your turnover limit, you have to determine your turnover limit also, whether it exceeds 1 crore rupees or 50 lakhs rupees or so on, and according you to decide. And therefore, probably the date has been extended till 30th June 2020. Next is the payment of tax and return. Every composition tax person has to file their details of outward tax supply in and pay the tax in the form which is known as a CMP 08. For the end, they have to file the quarterly return. So quarterly return for the quarter ended March 20 falls due on 18th April 2020. So here they said yes. Since this for dues falls under within the period 20th March to 29th June, we will extend the date. Which what date they have extended? Say it. now we are extended to 7th July 2020. So this is the new date which everyone has to keep it in mind. This is by way of a notification number 34 of 2020. Then this composition taxpayer has to file the annual return also in the form which is known as a GSTR 04. So annual return is not only GSTR 9 or 969. Uh, it is 04 also in respect of composition scheme person. So for financial year 1920, they have to file till 30th April 2020. So that date has been extended to 15th July 2020 by way of amendment to the 
uh, notification number 30 of 2020 by amending the GST fourth amendment rule 2020. Then one more thing, uh, compliance which needs to be done by the uh, uh, composition taxable person. Now suppose on some 30th March 2020, they were under the composition scheme and now they have exceeded the limit. Right, so they have to now under normal scheme from 2020-21. So if they are into the normal scheme, then what will happen that they have to reverse the uh, sorry, it's otherwise. They from normal scheme he wanted to the opt of uh, normal scheme he wanted to opt for the composition scheme for 2021. Then in that respect, he has to reverse the input tax credit which is the available in their stock, which is lying at the on 31st March 2020. So that reversal needs to be done. That reversal date was 31st May 2020. That date has been extended to 31st July 2020. So this all are the due dates. So now what one has to do? One has to prepare a Google. You know the Google very new. There is a calendar is there. All this due date needs to be stored over there. Otherwise, how do we come to know that which due date is there? Lot many due dates we have seen uh, till now. So now one has to prepare a composite chart. And every time the we have to be the consultant. We have to send the information to the client that boss, this is the due date. Please provide the details. Otherwise, there would not be any benefit of concessional rate of interest or a uh, waiver of the lead filing fees. So one has to be uh, now aware about this. Now I will request the coordinator that one has to now also prepare a guide how to keep the track of, of, the, of all this compliance data with the advent of this uh, uh, Google Calendar. Otherwise, we may uh, uh, able to miss out some of the dates. Uh, so one more seminar is required on that. Well noted, sir. Yeah. Then next, let's come to the other tax taxpayers. Now, one more category of taxpayer is a non-resident taxable person. Who is non-resident taxable person? Is it is a person who occasionally undertakes a transaction involving the supply of goods or services or both whether as a principal or agent in any other capacity, but who has no, no fixed place of business or residence in India, they are known as a non-resident taxable person. Unko bhi return file karna padha, konsa return file karna hai? GSTR file. Now this GSTR file, file this is again only a, a return. That due date is the 20th of the next month. Now let's see for which month uh, now and uh, how the uh, interest, concessional rate of interest and date filing these benefit is uh, available to them or not. Now what it says, for the month of February 20, the due date was 20th March. Again, it is covered under that uh, relaxation measure. So they have said, okay, we are extending the date to 30th June 2020. So interest is uh, uh, normally would be applicable at the rate of 18%. So now what they are saying, we will, there is no relaxation. Huh? Though they are saying that we are extending the date, but that doesn't mean that they don't have to pay the interest. Interest would be applicable at the rate of 18%. So I was wondering whether that really concessional rate is available to them or not. No concessional rate is not available to them. So that means if anything is paid, uh, filed after 30th June, the interest rate of 18% would be available uh, 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 to them. As regards the uh, late filing fees, there is no relaxation for late filing fees because under the notification 31, it's only talk about the return to be filed under section 37, 38, and 39. Uh, and, and, uh, 39 not mentioned about GSTR file. So there is no relaxation in the late filing fees. They have to pay the late filing fees beyond the 30th June 2020. So all the returns for the month of Feb 20, March 20, April 20, and May 20, it has to be filed by 30th June 2020. This is by way of a notification number 35 only 2020. Now, what is the late filing fee? Very important thing. Now, if you recollect, uh, that section 47 and notification number 6. That notification number 6 is available only in respect of GST 3B. And uh, uh, just a second. For GST 1, there is a notification which I have failed to say. Uh, uh, for uh, uh, no waiver of uh, late filing fees is through notification number 64, and which is same as for uh, for the 20 rupees and 50 rupees. Only the notification number is changed. Right. So please uh, do keep it in mind. In respect of uh, 
this GSTR5, no relaxation. So normal late fees would be reasonable and normal late fees is INR 200 rupees every day and maximum 10,000 rupees. So there, there is a mark difference 20 rupees or 50 rupees ke jaga pe 200 rupees. Hai. So one has to be careful uh, about it. Then next uh, tax payer is the input service distributor. Here also in interest service distributor, normal uh, the due date has been now 30th June 2020 for the month of March, April and May. In the month of June, that liability would be on food, uh, in the falls under July. So they have not given anything, but otherwise all the dates has to be, all the returns have to be filed by this input service distributor by 30th June 2020. No concessional rate of interest, normal rate of 18% would be applicable and normal late filing fees would be available if the return is filed beyond 30th June 2020. This is by way of a notification number 35 public 2020. So no relaxation in interest and late filing fees. Then TSTR 7, this is tax deduction at source. Those person who is required to deduct the tax at source. So here only specified category of persons are required to obtain the number, though they are not providing, uh, supplying any goods or services. Who are those? The, all that uh, department or establishment uh, of the central government or state government, local authority or a government agency or any other person notified by the government who is required to deduct tax at the rate of 2% if the contract exceeds 2.5 lakhs rupees. So they have to deduct the TDS for while they are discharging the payment to their supplier. Now, there the due date uh, uh, is 10th of the next month. So, March 20 ka due date is falls under 10th April, April is 10th May and May is 10th June. So, they have to uh, deduct the, and deposit the tax by 10th April, 10th May uh, and 10th June. Now, that date has been extended to 30th June 2020. Beyond that 30th June 2020, if they deposit the tax, then in that case, normal rate of interest and late filing fees would be applicable. But till 30th June 2020, no problem. This is by way of a notification number 35 oblique 2020. Then comes a GSTR 8, tax collected at source. This is a just like a cylinder which is there under the this is just like under the income tax act which there is in which is tax collected also. Here the uh, duty is casted on the e-commerce operator to be, uh, to collect the sales, uh, tax at source while they are uh, collecting the money on behalf of the supplier at the rate of 2% while discharge giving them the payment they will uh, collect the tax at source or the rate of 2% and deposit the tax on behalf of that supplier so that they will get the uh, supplier will get the credit uh, at the time of filing of the return here also the due date is same just like a tds uh, 10th of the next month so march 9 ka tax has to be deposited by 10th april april ka tax has to be deposited by 10th may May is the 10th june and all this uh, tax liability has to be discharged by 30th june 2020 this is by way of a notification number 35 of the 2020 if the payment has been made beyond 30th June 2020, there is no relaxation in the interest and late filing fees. Interest would be charged at the rate of 18% and late filing fees is rupees 200 for every day and maximum is 10,000 rupees. So this is and last one is the online information and database retrieval of information system. This is a GSTR 5A. Here the due date is the 20th of the next month. So all February, March and April, May, April and May return has to be filed again by the 20th June. No uh, other dates, uh, all return has to be May 20 has to be filed by 30th June 2020. No relaxation in interest and late filing fees if you file your return after 30th June 2020. So apart from one and three weeks, this all are the requirement or a compliance which which everyone needs to be done. Though I understand that most in most of the practitioners, all these returns would not be there, but we should keep it in mind. Bornos kabi from the apna client naya business chalu kar now let's come to the next. Now this is all the compliance which, which one needs to uh, do as they got compliance. Uh, now let's come. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 uh,
टू थ्री क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड विद रिटर्न सर मेनी विल नॉट बी एबल टू डू रिटर्न्स सो ड्यू टू द बेस्ट मेनी पर्सन विल नॉट बी एबल टू डू रिटर्न्स ड्यू टू लॉकडाउन सिचुएशन फॉर मार्च 20 हाउ टू कंप्लाई सो आई हैव टोल्ड यू दैट बेस्ड ऑन द क्राइटेरिया ऑफ टैक्स पेबल अप टू 5 क्रोर्स they will have the benefit of, of relaxation in the uh, interest the date has not been extended but yes the, in the payment uh, concessional rate of interest benefit has been given i have also provided you with the uh, detailed computation uh, how to compute the interest tax uh, interest liability as well as the how the under what situation there would be a waiver of interest so i think that will uh, uh, give you the uh, whole picture of the idea so this is the slide you have to first decide uh, what is your uh, turnover so let's see first of all 5 crore ka more than 5 crore so that will give you the indication this 5 crore turnover up to the, the uh, 24 june if you file it then concessional rate of interest is levyable see the, i have explained you that there is a concessional rate of interest provision is there above 5 crore so they know that this above 5 crore big players they have to pay the tax within the due date but only the uh, benefit in interest is given up to 9% rupees and 15 days only relaxation has been given not more than that if your turnover is less than 5 crore then yes benefit has been given that yes we will not charge you any interest if you pay it by 29 june 2020 so this is the table from which uh, you will able to understand i hope i have been i am clear on that yes sir yes sir. next is turnover should be of 1920 or 1890 for limit of 5 crore so if you are filing for february 20 or a march 20 that it is a previous preceding financial year so 18 uh, 1920 is uh, sorry uh, preceding financial year means 1819 has to be considered same way which you are considering for your normal return suppose if you file your return for january 20 what uh, turnover limit you will get today Same turnover limit. Here there is no change in the determination of the turnover limit. Then next is us. Uh, what about the due date of ITC zero four? Ha. Huh? ITC zero four. Nothing has been come out. This ITC zero four. Uh, this is as regards the job worker to principal. Nothing has come out separately. I am sure it will come. Many of us are could not able to file the return, so that's why they have not given the date. It appears to be like this. Then next is turnover for financial year 1819 to be considered for Feb and March 20th uh, naturally, na? Uh, Charvi, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So to determine, so that's what I have told you to file the return for January 20. How you will classify yourself? Whether you are above five crore or less than five crore, based on which turnover? Hello. Yes, sir. So naturally, preceding financial year, so that turnover you have to consider. Right. So there is no change in that. Here only the change is only in respect of interest and late filing fees. Otherwise, everything remains same. Yes, sir. Yeah. Anything else? How shall I proceed? Uh, yes, sir. One question. Uh, that if you have time, please guide regarding notification for DCR nine and nine C. For I am coming to that. You are okay. first of all raise okay. the query relating to what we have discussed. So tomorrow paper poori na ke sir. Any question? I will. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Ah, so be patient. I am having all the time. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. सपोज देर इज अ टैक्स लाइबिलिटी ऑफ वन लैक रुपीज 
I don't have one lakh rupees right now. So what I do, I have the sixty thousand with me. So I deposit sixty thousand rupees uh, uh, to the uh, make the payment of tax, and it will go to my cash later. So now the question is, as regards the calculation of interest, that the interest would be calculated on one lakh or forty thousand. That is your question. Correct. Right. Now this is a normal problem. What do you mean by filing of return? Filing of return means duly adjusting of your liability. How you will adjust? You know, while making the payment, you are adjusting your set off of the liability in the return. That means your cash ledger and your electronic credit ledger will be set off against each other. Then you upload the return. So at that point of time, only you have filed your return. Just by discharging the payment. Into your cash ledger doesn't mean you have discharged your tax liability. So this is a wrong notion which is there. Huh? That means though you have paid the sixty thousand rupees, it is there appearing in the cash ledger. That doesn't mean that up the tax liability, up up the return file for the or tax on account for the, then your interest liability stops. No way. Your interest would be stopped only if when you made filed your return. You have not filed your return because you have not set off your tax liability. So your interest would be still there, though your amount is there in your cash ledger because you have not utilized it. Okay, so the interest would be on the one lakh rupees, and it won't be considered as a on account payment of tax or advance payment of that tax. This is not income tax. Ah, uh, I think we are getting few more questions. Shall we take now, or because time is running short, shall we take now, or we'll take afterwards? I think it's seven o'clock. Let me go ahead yeah. because there are some things. Yes. Let us uh, complete this if time available. I am there. Not an issue. Correct. Okay. Right. Now restriction on ITC till October 2019. Everyone was happy. Whatever credit is there in the books of account, you are eligible for the credit, provided it is not hit by Section 17.5. Section 17.5 may they have mentioned say seven eight conditions. Apart from that, if you are not falling under 17.5, you are eligible to take the whole credit. That means in your books of account, suppose you have one lakh rupees ka tax ka tax pay kiya hai on the invoices one lakh parabar hai. That means you have purchased the goods and one lakh rupees tax you have paid. Then you are and if it is a whole eligible ITC not covering under section 17.5. The whole one lakh rupees was eligible as credit. You don't have to verify whether your uh, supplier, who is uh, from whom you purchase the goods or services, has filed the return or not. However, from 9 October 2019, scenario has changed. What the government has said that many persons, scrupulous persons, when the taxpayers are taking the due advantage of this tax credit. So what they were doing, though they have not actually purchased the goods or services. They will take the credit and pay the lesser amount of tax. Therefore, in order to look uh, block the loophole, they have come out with a novel concept. What was the novel concept? They say now by taking the credit, what you have to do, you have to first of all see whether your supplier from whom you acquired the goods or services has filed the return or not. Filed the return means GSTR one. That means on the uh, now when this outward tax uh, out, details of outward supply has to be uploaded by the next of the tenth uh, of the next month. So suppose October 19 है उसका uh, GSTR one कभी file करना है tenth November. So you have to verify that on tenth November who has filed your GSTR one. So those persons who have filed the GSTR one that it, uh, details will be reflected in your GSTR two. आपको 12th morning में देखें कि आपको सारे details मिलेंगी of the names of the sub details of the supply from whom you have acquired the goods or services. So they say that on the basis of that GSTR two, you are eligible to take the credits. Now suppose in this case we have acquired the goods of one lakh rupees tax amount. In our books of account, we have the invoice with us, but my supplier. Only sixty thousand ka tax jo bala they have uh, uploaded the details so sixty thousand credit is available in my GSTR two way. So now the government says that you are eligible to take the credit of sixty thousand rupees which is our with uh, available in your GSTR two way plus twenty percent of sixty thousand which is twelve thousand so maximum seventy two thousand rupees 
ITC credit you can offset it against your output tax liability. This has been notified by way of a notification number 49 oblique uh, 2019. Sorry, it should not be 17. 49 oblique 2019, dated 9th October 2019. Then, in the month of 1st March 2020, they have again amended the law. They have said now instead of 10 percent or instead of 20 percent. Now we are saying you can are eligible for only 10 percent. So what it makes that in the last example we have said 60,000 rupees plus 20 percent. So 7, 12,000, 60,000 uh, 60, 20 percent is additional 12,000 rupees credit I am eligible. So out of 1 lakh I am eligible to take the credit of 72,000. Now from 1st January 2020 that has been said that now only you are eligible for 66,000 rupees, 60,000 plus 6,000, 66,000 rupees ITC you are eligible which can you can offset it against your output tax liability. Wonderful. Now let us come, uh, come into the present situation. So this is the example which I have given. Calculation. Hmm? Amount reflected in 2A is 50,000. Ineligible. So from the 2A, we have to first of all found it out what is the ineligible amount. So with that means that falls under section 17.5 that comes to 5,000 rupees. So my eligible amount reflected in 2A is 45,000. Now what the law says that you are eligible for amount reflected in 2A that is 45,000 plus 10% 10 of 45,000 which comes to how much? 45,000 plus 4,500 which is equal to 49,500 right which is 49,500 I am eligible in this example. Now what law says now? Now it says that government has provided the relaxation because of this lockdown condition. Many people would not be in a position to file them. GSTR1 and the time limit has also been extended. So now they are saying that for the period February 20 to August 20, now you have to take the credit which is reflected as per your books of account. Aapko jo books of account mein reflect ho rahi hai, wo saari credit aap le sakte hai. That is that as per if that means you are eligible to do that thing which is prior to October 2019. Jitne bhi credit, that means 1 lakh rupees in my earlier example, 1 lakh rupees ki credit le sakte from February 20 to August 2020. Ye jo 10% ka restriction hai or the amount reflected in 2 a wo criteria in August 20 apply nahi hoga. Very good, very good gesture from the point of view of the government. Good relaxation has been provided. Now further says, Ka isa hi chalta rega? No, it's not like that. What they are saying, that while you file the return for the month of September 20, tabhi aapko kya karna hai? Aapko cumulative total lena hai, February to August 2020. Aapko calculate karna hai, aap kitne eligible ho, February to August 2020 mein. That means aapko total karna hai, as per books of account, how much you have taken from February to August. What is the total available in GSTR 2A for till February 20 to August 20? If any excess aapne le liya hai to that credit you to reverse by filing the return for the month of September 20. Now let's see how it will work. So I have given here a calculation for a better understanding. February 20 may my eligible IT is 10,000 rupees and inward supply is reflected in 2A is 6,000. Now, since the relaxation has been provided, so how much I will claim in my GSTR 3B while filing return? I can claim 10,000 rupees instead of 6,000 rupees. Similarly, for the month of March, April, May, June, July, August. Sub may many eligible IT says for books of account a 1 lakh 5,000. In my 2A, it is reflected 68,200 rupees. So, technically speaking, before relaxation, I am eligible to take the credit of only 68,200 rupees. So that means I have taken more credit, right? So this more credit, I have to reverse it. So how this more credit has to be reversed? Let us take this. ITC claim is for GST 3B for the period February 20 to August 20, 1 lakh 5,000. We have seen here. 1 lakh 5,000. Okay? Then eligible ITC is for GSTR 2A February 20 to August 20, 68,200. This is the 68,200. 110 percent 
आई एम एलिजिबल सो सिक्सटी एट थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड का टेन परसेंट एड कर दो सिक्स एट टू जीरो डिफरेंस ऑफ ट्वेंटी आई हैव टू रिवर्स इन द मंथ ऑफ सप्टेंबर टू थाउजेंड एंड जो भी टू ए में लिखता है वो प्लस टेन परसेंट उतना ही आई टी सी हो जाए सो दिस इज अलकम प्रोविजन इन माई व्यू बिकॉज द गवर्नमेंट हैज गिवन द रिलेक्सेशन Uh, in doing this. so now this is an another calculation which every one of us uh, has to make it ki kaise karne ka now another calculation suppose if you don't have the money in the month of september 2020 to reverse this 29980 aapka business nahi hai aur aapke paas paisa bhi nahi hai so your two option either aapka existing jo electronic credit ledger usme se aap 29980 reverse karenge aur agar nahi hai आपके इलेक्ट्रॉनिक क्रेडिट लेजर में और कैश लेजर में तो हुआ ही नहीं देन इन दैट केस यू मे डिफर इट है और आपने डिफर किया दिया तो नॉर्मल रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट ऑफ 18 परसेंट वुड बी एप्लीकेबल टू यू एस पर सेक्शन 50 ऑफ द सी जी एस टी एक्ट सो दैट वन एज टू की सपोज आपके सारे सप्लाई है प्रॉपर है उन्होंने अभी रिटर्न फाइल कर दिया है देन इन दैट केस यू नीड नॉट हैव टू वरी और आपको कोई रिवर्स करने की भी जरूरत नहीं है सो देर फोर यू हैव टू ऑलवेज चेंज योर सप्लायर दैट आप रिटर्न फाइल करो रिटर्न फाइल करो देन ओनली द क्रेडिट वुड बी एलिजिबल सो दिस इज रियली अ वेलकम प्रोविजन एज रिगार्ड दिस आई टी सी क्रेडिट नाउ लेट्स कम टू दिस इज दी ऑल कॉम्प्लाइन विच हैज टू बी लर्न एनी क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस आई टी सी सेम सिचुएशन आपका क्वार्टरली फाइल करता है तो एज ऑन ऑगस्ट ट्वेंटी आपको देखना है कि इन दी मंथ ऑफ सप्टेम्बर हाउ मच जी एस टी आर टू ए क्रेडिट इज देर अभी भी आपको क्वार्टरली करते तो उसकी क्रेडिट नेक्स्ट क्वार्टर में मिलेगी दैट मींस क्वार्टर इंडेक्स सितंबर का है व्हेन एवर यू फाइल इट इन द जनवरी एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम यू आर एलिजिबल टू क्लेम द क्रेडिट नॉट अदरवाइज तो उतना आपका क्रेडिट चला ही जाएगा ओके सेकंड क्वेश्चन इफ सितंबर 20 आईटीसी इज लेस देन आईटीसी टू रिवर्स फॉर ऑगस्ट 20 इफ सितंबर 20 ITC is less than ITC reverse from August to 20. So you August mean to say, keep me. I have the excess ITC with me. So here, I have to do the reverse from August to 29980. First of all, now suppose I have the excess ITC. That means GSTR 2A is more than 29980. Then I need not have to worry, na? Because I have told you. I can reverse this 29,980 either from my electronic credit ledger or my cash ledger. So if in my electronic credit ledger more amount is available, more than 29,980, 980, I can pay. That means that you are assuming that in September 20 you have purchased more goods, so that you can very well offset it against this thing. There is no issue on that. Okay, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Shall I? Right. Yes. Now, certain GST amendment. Hello. Uh, this. Hello. This amendment has come into effect. The uh, notification has been issued in uh, April 2020. Let's see this. First one is the the much awaited audit GST R9. Say many of you must have attended the chamber seminar, chamber of tax consultant seminar of uh, years that are. Before this only, that's why my lecture was delayed by half an hour. Now, what says that every registered person whose aggregate turnover during a financial year exceeds two crore rupees shall get his account audited? Now, the one more proviso has been inserted by notification number 16 of the 2020, which says that for the financial year 18-19. Now aggregate turnover should exceed five crore rupees. Then and then only he has to get his account audited. So that means if 1819's turnover is less than five crore rupees, he is not required to get his accounts audited. 
तो आपको 1819 का टर्न ओवर देखना है इफ इट इज नॉट एक्सीडिंग फाइव करोड़ रुपीज आपको ऑडिट नहीं करना है दैट मीन्स नाइन सी का सबमिशन नहीं करना है बट यू टू फाइल एनुअल रिटर्न इन फॉर्म नंबर नाइन Now, when you have to file this, it says that the due date for filing of audit report in Form 9C, as well as annual return in Form 9, is extended till 30 June 2020 by way of notification number 15 of the 2020, which is dated 23 March 20. So, 23 March को ही बता दिया था उन्होंने. ये जब तभी उन्होंने notify कर दिया. See, this is the funniest thing. At the time when that uh, she, uh, our finance minister has come, she has pronounced the welfare measure, right? And from the basis of that, immediately the notification has been issued. Section that the notification of 168A has come into effect from 29th, uh, 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 31st March 2020. Before that, this notification has been issued. So I really wondered how these things are uh, going on. But in any case, let's not go into that. Now the question the thing is, if your turnover is less than five crore rupees, you need not have to do, uh, get your accounts audited, but you have to file the annual return. Below two, suppose if your turnover is below two crore rupees, then the option has been given that you need not have to file annual return also. Which the uh, circular has been issued way back in 2018 when the annual return for 1718 was was to be filed. So at that point of time, two years they have clubbed together 1718 as well as 1819 and said that if your turnover is less than two crore, you need not have to. You have option, sorry, you have an option not to file the uh, return. Okay, so this is as regards 9 and 9C. Yeah. Now someone was raising the question as regards this uh, uh, or uh, GST audit 99C. Now tell me that uh, question. No question is issued as of no for 99C. So so I think from this it is clear. So now so let's wait, go wait. to the yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Continue continue continue. But okay. Now refund to exporters. Now for refund mechanism, many welfare measures has been taken. Recently, they have issued a, a circular and specified to uh, all the. Ashwin, yeah. Ashwin, sorry, one uh, question has came. Mm. I'm uh, I'm uh, posting you. Yeah. yeah. So I have two minutes time. Yeah. ITC yes. pertaining to 1718 was availed in 1819 and rightly shown in table 13 of GST at 9 of 1718. Very good. Whether will be such ITC shown in GST at 9 of 1819? If GST at 9 is applicable, then we can show it in table 12. But this one is not an audit case. Now, with due respect, now this query is in respect of audit and annual return. Can we park it uh, till uh, so, so 7:30? I will definitely reply to this query. Okay, sir. Okay, okay sir. Yeah, I'm parking this query, right? Now, and I would request the participant that please be specific to the query. If any other query apart from this, I will definitely take up at the end. There is no problem in that, right? Now, refund to exporters. Now I was telling that uh, government has given a uh, relief measures to for the refund things, refund things to all, whether it's a direct tax or indirect tax. Government has said that if any refund below five crore rupees, they have to immediately expedite it and issue the refund to the uh, taxpayers so that they can ultimately utilize it for the uh, payment of taxes. This is a very welcome provision. Now here in refund to exporters, what they have done? See the Provisions, huh? In notification number 16, they have amended the calculation for file, filing the refund claim. Now you know that the exporter has a uh, is eligible to export the tax, uh, export the goods or services with payment of tax and without payment of tax. If exporting the tax with pay, uh, is exporting the goods or services with payment of tax, he is eligible to refund the. Uh, money from the customs department that is the cash pay, uh, pay payment which amount will come directly into the uh, taxpayer's account another option is under lut without payment of tax and he is eligible to claim the itc that means the poor taxes 
which he has paid for procuring the goods or services which he has procured, that he is eligible to refund under section 54 read with rule 89. Now it says that suppose if you are a 100% exporter, then in that case you are eligible to, re uh, to refund of every taxes which you have paid into the government for the procuring of, uh, from the government for whatever goods or services you prefer. But suppose if you are having a uh, domestic turnover as well as export turnover, then naturally the proportion has to be made. Now uh, while doing the proportion, the formula has been given and accordingly it says FOB value of goods exported. Now there they have tinkered with the formula uh, calculation. Now they have decided that from 23rd March 2020, that is the date from which they have notified this amendment, it is now provided. Now the value of FOB value of export would be FOB value. That day you have to compare it with two amounts. That is either you have to take the FOB value or 1.5 times or 150% of the value of live goods domestically supplied by the same or similarly placed supplier is declared by the supplier whichever is less. So you have to compute three items. Say for example, I have uh, exported the goods worth, ru uh, worth rupees uh, 60 lakhs rupees. Then I have to say FOB value of goods 60 lakhs. If the same goods is domestically sold at say uh, 30 lakhs rupees, then that amount I have to take as a 30 lakh, which is so I will give, give you the calculation and then from the other buyer what he, price he is exporting and then the three value we have to compare and whichever is less that we have to take into consideration. Let's see the formula uh, how it works before 23rd March and after 31st March. Now on the left side, first table is refund calculation prior to 30, 23rd March 20. So I have calculated export turnover and local turnover. Export turnover is 19 lakhs, 90 lakhs rupees and local turnover is 60 lakhs. So total turnover is 1 crore 50 lakhs. So proportion is 60% is my export turnover and 40% is my local turnover. My input tax credit for the month of, of this period is 16 lakh 20 thousand rupees. So technically speaking, when I file the refund claim of this 16 lakh 20 thousand, I should be eligible to claim the refund of 60 percent. So what is the formula? Net ITC 16 lakh 20 thousand into turnover of zero rated supply. What is turnover of zero rated supply? 90 lakhs rupees. So this is my total adjusted total turnover that is export turnover upon plus local turnover which amounts to 1 crore 50 lakhs rupees. Right now here the that means my formula will say 16 lakh 20 thousand into 90 lakhs divided by 1 crore 50 lakhs which comes to my eligible maximum I can claim refund is up to 9 lakh 72 thousand. Now let's understand the situation after 23rd March 2020. What it tries to say. Same amount, my turnover is 1 crore 50 lakhs rupees, export turnover 90 lakhs and local turnover is 60 lakhs rupees. And my ITC credit is 16 lakh 20 thousand. Now I have to determine the turnover of zero rated supply. How I will determine the turnover? First of all, I will say FOB value of uh, zero rated supply under LUT, which comes to 90 lakhs rupees, which is provided in the uh, amount. Then I have to compare if further that taxpayer is also doing supplying the domestic goods of the same kind, huh? then he has to multiply his turnover by 1.5 times. In this case, 60 lakhs rupees is there, so I have to multiply by 1.5, which comes to 90 lakhs rupees. So I have to put that figure 90 lakhs. Third situation, I have to also compare that what are the other domain supplier supplying the same goods in the domestic market. So my call to say take the competitor's value. He's supplying the goods, same goods in the domestic market market at 50 lakhs rupees. So I have to multiply 50 lakhs into 1.5 lakhs rupees, 1.5 lakhs, which comes to 75 lakhs rupees. And then I have to compare which is the lowest among three. So which is the lowest among three is 75 lakhs rupees. So I have to substitute this turnover of zero rated supply to 75 lakhs rupees. So if we compare it, in the previous uh, regime, 23rd March, my zero rated turnover was 90 lakhs. In this new regime, after 23rd March, it's 75 lakhs. So now what is my maximum refund is 8 lakh 10,000, which was previously was 9 lakh 72,000. 
this will create a more confusion what will happen first of all who will decide this how we will come to know that what is domestic value how he has to arrive at the domestic value which has been done by my other supplier so for that matter next time when i prepare uh, apply for the uh, for the refund application i will never apply this uh, uh, value as for the domestic supply i will always say 90 lakhs rupees my export turnover which is their fob value and if i am selling at uh, in the domestic market of the same quality quantity and quality of goods then i will take it otherwise i will not take it so this gives an another thing that this is becomes a subjective matter of issue in the report and that is creating a problem on the one hand government is saying we are giving you the relaxation on the other hand they are curtailing this benefit of itc refund this is just like a previous thing under the income tax act i remember it hsc lot many cases where they right from the year 19 um it is when the it hsc was there and lot many cases has gone to supreme court how to determine the turnover and how to give the exemption now the same thing will come now suppose if i file the refund application now from where did the ssc officer will get the similar value of goods supplied by the domestic supplier normally he will say that this is the thing uh, i i am having the case of with this i will substitute this which is much more lower so i will substitute the lower that and my it is the deferred would be less this will create a total havoc matter would be under litigation and this would be definitely challenged before the high court because this is unconstitutional this cannot be done in this manner but this kind of thing is not acceptable when such kind of provisions is there on the one hand they are saying that we are doing the ease of doing business is this a doing the ease of doing business in my view no way it has to be a simple transparent system it is not a transparent system but let us not go into the depth of that the only the thing is now one more calculation is required and the refund amount would be lesser so this is what the uh, law says so one has to be now very much careful after 23rd march 2020 any refund application will go that has to be calculated in this manner now the funniest part this law is applicable or this rule is applicable only when you are exporting the goods under lut or without payment of tax that means if you are exporting the goods with payment of tax then this rule will not be applicable so kya ho jayega suppose in the same you have applied with payment of tax so after see the tax amount that you did not have to do this now you must be wondering why such kind of provisions are there of late it has been noticed that uh, Too many uh, export refund has been claimed by the some of the taxpayers. In the name of export, they are exporting the goods, which in reality the goods are going at a very high rate, and some mischiefs are done, and they are claiming the more refund, and that's why probably to curb that loophole, they have introduced this provision. But just for the few of the taxpayers who are taking this benefit they have tried to play around with all the exporters this is not the way in which the it has to be operated because they have all other mechanism to control that said so that they have to take it into consideration let's go to the another refund thing right now the recovery of refund paid to the exporters now as i have told you that the, all the exporters are eligible to claim the refund of taxes paid or refund of the itc in to tax credit now suppose the government officer has granted you the refund either under the payment of tax or under the input tax credit now they have inserted one more what they have said many times sir the exporters do not get the refund uh, sale export proceeds from their uh, customer or customer in that case what will happen so at this point of time they are silent not uh, because whenever they don't get the consideration in convertible foreign exchange what will happen and in respect of export of goods there was no need for convertible foreign exchange also so now they have introduced uh, uh, one more rule which is 96b what it tries to say that the exporter has to realize the export process whether in full or part in india that is very much important 
within time period time period of 12 months allowed under the fema including the extension of time period that means somebody will raise a question okay, what if i am having an efc account that as per the fema you can uh, uh, receive the amount in efc account that would be considered as received in india that has been clarified so one need not have to uh, worry about it so you have to receive the export realization of goods or services within 12 months from the date of export for an extended period if at any has been allowed by the fema but if you don't receive it then what then the department says you have to refund the amount whatever has been given to you to the government along with the interest if you don't refund the amount within 30 days of the time limit prescribed under the seventh uh, under the law further it says that if you don't refund the money then it would be recoverable as a recovery of tax under section 73 or 74 of the cgsk further it says that you don't have to see only the fema now suppose if your sale proceeds or any part thereof is not realized uh, as within the time period stipulated by the fema but rbi reserve bank of india has given you the permission to that this money should not be recoverable then under the uh, uh, merit then in that circumstances the amount could not be recovered from the exporter so this is a saving grace but honestly the reserve bank of india and fema will go together so it will not be in contrary to that uh, thing now further now what they have envisioned one more further situation now the government has given the refund but due to some reason that exporter has not realized the export payment realized within 12 months period of time so naturally he has to give back the money to the government but after some period of time say after two years or three years if he is able to realize the money then in that case what will happen then in that case fact they have to again apply to the government that yes or see whatever money i have given it back please give it back to me within three months from the date of realization of that export process so and you get able to get the money so whenever you are receiving the uh, export process you are eligible to again get back your money of the taxes which you paid or the input tax rate even so this is also a welcome provision which has been introduced newly from 16 by way of notification number uh, 16 oblique 2020 which is introduced from 23 march 2020 so this is all about the amendments which were uh, there if any questions are there now i will definitely take up first as regards the amendment and then i will take it uh, as regards the uh, query which i have taken it uh, apart as regards the itc yeah now one more there thing is been posted yeah sir, four questions four questions export refund question department will always go for lower value naturally that is the intention that you they will always go for a lower value so that lower amount of tax that is always there now the dispute will be more that's what i have said that now the more dispute will be there so more opportunity for all of us to fight we have to take it in a positive manner otherwise we cannot survive then in case of a refund to exporter new provision will apply for in case of a refund to export a new provision will apply on export made after 23rd may march 2020 yeah, technically sticking all this provision should be applied only after 23 march 2020 only it is not like any application which has been made after 23rd march 20 but again some clarification is required whether application which has been made after 23rd march 20 refund application or the export which has been after 23rd march 20 technically speaking this should be for the export which has been uh, uh, done after 23rd march should be taken into consideration and not the application of refund but the verification is required in this uh, aspect in my application is pending for say quarter 1 of 1920 and i applied till 23rd march in say applying on 31st may then i follow this not to move if you already applied then this will uh, this procedure will not be there only all the exports in my view after 23rd march 20 would be uh, going for this new uh, notification or new uh, 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 new calculation what if value did not take on exported in may 20 then 
therefore implication will be there for the proportionate calculation of refund. Now, it may, uh, now the uh, uh, law provides that the uh, LUT application for the period 2021, that is April 20 to March 21, has to be made before you start exporting the goods or services. Now, because of this lockdown condition, if you, due to certain reasons, you cannot be able to file an application and obtain the number. You know, so the law provides that yes, before the export takes place, you have to apply for the LUT and you can very well do the thing. There is no problem in that. Suitable uh, verification is also expected in respect of this LUT that before the export, you should have the LUT. Then you can definitely that this problem will not come. GST new number has been on only now my client had imported without GST based on IEC. Now they I didn't understand this. GST new number has been on how we knew. Now my client had imported without GST based on IC. Now damage. No, I cannot able to understand this query. Related to yeah. As you understand, sir. I think, I think basically the GST number is taken after uh, the goods are imported. Uh, purely based on. So before, so the loss is very clear at the time of uh, the, 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 taking the credit. You should be registered. Now in this case, first of all, is imported the goods and not registered. Then how can he will be get, getting the benefit? So first of all, he has to register himself. Then only he should import. Then only he should get it. Now because then that would be number would be there in his uh, bill of lading. Rashid, I am asking, like he has to release the goods from customs. So uh, how we can do that because his GST number is not getting. Okay, okay, okay. So but before releasing, he has to apply, na? Better thing would be. Goods has already come into the uh, customs bond, uh, warehouse, right? And now he is releasing after naturally this lockdown condition. So first of all, you apply for the registration and then release the goods. Naturally, the damages would be there, na? I understand that. And, the, and uh, you cannot do anything. But in the customs, sir, uh, some relaxation is there. GST number taken gave by 30 April or before they had any provision? Before. Now everything is online. Now you can apply. Time limit is not applicable. We have seen that. Na? You can apply. We have applied, but they will give. Of course, they will give. They are working on it. They will give the number. And one more thing that at least if you apply, that is a proof that yes, you applied and they have not given. But it is always advisable to, to apply for it. Then relating to cumulative effect of 36.4, do I need to pay interest while reversing in the return for the month of September 20? No, you need not have to reverse it. If you reverse it after September 20, then interest would be uh, payable because they have provided the relaxation till September. Because they have said that you have to reverse the whatever cumulative effect has to be given in September only. So there won't be any interest calculation till September. But yes, if you are not able to reverse in the month of September due to any reason, then you have to pay the interest. Then ITC pertaining to 1718 was availed in 1819 and rightly shown in table number 13 of GSTR 9 of 1718. Where will be such ITC shown in GSTR 9 of 1890? If GSTR 9C is applicable, that we can show it in table 20. But this one is not. See, non audit case in my view in GSTR 9, you cannot show it anywhere. Because in table number six, you have to give the details, table number six, which is pertaining to the IPC, which you have claimed by, uh, by, uh, uh, on the basis of 3B. So all the details will be compiled on the basis of 3B, which you have filed. Now, in this case, in the, this 3B, you have claimed the credit relate uh, in uh, 3B of 1819, you have claimed the credit, credit pertaining to 1718. So naturally, it will come in your table number six of uh, GSTR 9. So you have to show it in uh, table number 6. You don't have choice. But then in by filing GSTR 9C, what you have to do in the table number 12, you have to bifurcate that this credit pertains to 1718. So I am reducing it. But in your case, you are saying that since this credit, uh, this uh, your client is not under audit, so you will not have to do it, anything. 
this is the basically a fault of GSTR 9. This they have not sold it out. I don't know what will happen uh, in the future. Due to next question, due to non-availability of data during lockdown period, if tax is paid upon account uh, now within the extended 15 days, then on relaxation from lockdown return is filed within new date, then what is the implication? There is broad forward credit which is sufficient to pay tax for the current period and if the CA uh, again. If there is a credit which is available in your uh, electronic credit ledger, then also unless and until you file your return, offset your credit, the benefit will not be available. Though in your electronic credit ledger, you have source of rupees, but in the, for the month of February 20 or March 20, you cannot able to file the return within that due date, then you have to pay the interest, you don't have the choice, because that state you cannot pay. Then LUP renewal till 30th June. Can you provide the notification? That, that notification has not come for the but uh, definitely since it falls within that section 168A, all the compliance which which needs to be complied between 23rd March 22 to 29th June, all that due date has been extended to 30th June. So one can take the benefit of that not, uh, notification 168A and the due date is 30th June only. But separate notification is expected. If realization is received after two years, tax is refunded, what about interest paid? Ah, so this is in respect of the ref, uh, uh, refund. Huh? Refund on which the uh, first of all refund has been issued by the department. Then since the realization has not been received, so it is again given back to the government and the amount is received after two years. So you will get the refund, but you will not get the re uh, interest from the government. That's for sure. You are expecting too much from the government. If my application is pending for say Q1 of 1920 and I applied till 23rd March and say applying on 31st May, then I have to follow this notification now what it try to say which application is pending. The question is if my application is pending for say Q1 of 1920, which application? Refund application? Can I have not applied till 23rd March? Then say applying on 31st May, then I do have to follow this whichever is lower. No, I don't understand in what respect uh, this query is. If you can throw light on that. Sir, I think for refund only. I think Are refund it? only. I think it is a refund only. Refund. Refund. So, uh, so I have told you that in my view, this rule, new rule would be applicable after 23rd March 2020 only, not for the prior period. Exports made without LUT, then rule of 23rd March 20 applicable for refund of items. So, so it means exports without LUT, that means you have exported with payment of tax. If it is with a payment of tax, then uh, this rule of IPC will not be applicable. While claiming refund, do I have to claim IGST first, whether GST portal auto calculate IGST ITC? Please don't ask the portal issue over here. Huh? I have told you, we are discussing here the GST law. Portal law is different. If I file GSTR 3D for turnover above 5 crore after 24th June 20, will late fees be charged for days or just a second? Give me two minutes. Just. Yeah, sorry, thanks. Uh, if, uh, if I file GSTR 3B for turnover above 5 crore after 24 June 20, will I will the late fees be charged for days after 24 June or from the respective month? No, once you have filed after 24 June 2020, the normal late fees would be chargeable. There will not be waiver. We won't get books released. So whether they will give number before lockdown, I think this we have already discussed. 
is there any time extension for LUT here? Yes, it would be 30th June 2020 because the uh, LUT has to be uh, taken prior to 31st March 2020 for the financial year 2021. If you cannot able to do that, then yes, there is a definitely time available to you. Uh, one circular was also that that if you can able to obtain the LUT before exporting the goods, then also the benefit would not be denied just for the procedural lapses. Question was uh, interest paid with tax and no the interest from refund. So that means the again on the refund, if I I'm, again I am repeating my uh, your query. Uh, exporter is there who has exported the goods and on the basis of export he has, uh, refund the, uh, he has got the refund, normal refund he has got it. Now due to non-realization of export proceeds, he has to refund back the uh, money along with interest, so presuming that he could not be uh, able, uh, uh, he, he could be able to refund the uh, uh, money within the due date prescribed. Now, when we realize the money after two years, he would be eligible to claim only the tax amount, whatever has been uh, refunded to the government, but not the interest amount, because this is what the law in everywhere. Uh, this is what uh, I recollect, because there is no mention of the interest amount. So to the best of my mind, interest which has been paid once, that won't be uh, refunded back. So, yeah, any further query? No, mm -hmm. not I think Asit Bhai, you have given all the queries. Yeah, now before parking, uh, let me thank you all of you for uh, inviting me to share my views. Here, the uh, 